All tug events and speaker presentations are available in high definition download from ethymarket.com. Last with uh, everything that we're learning, new pieces of the puzzle. I had an incredible opportunity to interview uh, my new friend yesterday. He couldn't make it for the live presentation. Um, so we did a pre-record. Uh, the following is the presentation, the interview that I did with the Hokodokde of the Gunyan Gihaga Nation, which in English would translate to the Mohawk Nation in Canada, one of our First Nations tribes. Um, one of the oldest tribes, and he is going to tell us some very interesting pieces, not only the creation story of the Iroquois, but also some of the little pieces that he's pulled together that may relate to a lot of other things that are going on in the now. So I hope you enjoy the presentation, and I will be back when it's over. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first Untangled Gathering, our Origins broadcast. We're doing an interview. I am doing this as a pre-recorded interview with my friend Daho Gadoke, um, who is from the Ganyang Gihaga Nation uh, in what is also known as Turtle Island. Welcome. It's so awesome to have you here with us. Well, thank you very much, and it is nice to be here. Binyangihaga, we're known as the Mohawk by all of the settler people here and, and the people worldwide. But that's an English word. They gave it to us in 1610. You can find it in Webster's Dictionary then. And it says Mohawk for the first listening. One who does not follow the king's law. We've been stuck with that name ever since. We don't mind, because we don't follow the king's law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and you know what? I would kind of wear that one pretty proudly we do. Actually, you, that's you about as proud a background as you can have absolutely now have you seen the, the uh, warrior flag that we fly yes i have right um, so you are part of the mohawk nation news yes and we will have the link up so everyone can go check out the website um you do a lot of writing on there telling it as it really is, not the not the prettyified news, but the real on the ground news of what's going on. And we're gonna have you on the round table discussion very, very soon so that we can really dive down those rabbit holes. But today we're gonna talk about the origins. And my wonderful friend here is gonna tell us the story of there, your story of the creation story, because it is really amazing. Well, you know, I've studied everyone's creation stories, and <laughs> it may, they all make me laugh because none of them ever tell the truth. Now, ours is real simple, and the child could figure it out. And now, with NASA today, just they just released that Planet X and Hebrew is on its way back. Well, we have a name for that. That's the sky world. And the Maya, they have a name for that. That's called Quetzalcoatl. People say that's their serpent god. No, it isn't. It's the sky world. That's their name for that. Now, in our creation story, we come from the sky world, which is another world that goes around our sun, well, about every 3,700 years. But, you know, we didn't have it all saying that in our ancient stories. But it's passing. It's coming by again right now. Now, all the pyramids in Mexico, they're all about... The, re the reappearance this is the fifth time that the sky world Quetzalcoatl is coming back since men have been here on earth so then we have to say okay how long have we been here five times five times so five times 3700 that's not that long ago right no it isn't well that's exactly this is where our position is we, we, we come from the sky world so on the sky world where the people come from five passings six passings ago actually uh, there was a beautiful woman. She was the most beautiful woman in the sky world. And because of, well, there were, the, the chief of the sky world, he was so smart, he could hear everyone think. When people think, the, the chief knows everyone what they're thinking, right? So anyways, 
he had put out a riddle to all the women in the sky world. And any woman who answered this riddle was going to be his wife. Now, generations, hundreds of generations, thousands of years passed, because that's how long they live on the sky world. And no one ever could answer this riddle. But then this one girl, she was only like 8, 17, and the most beautiful girl. And all of a sudden, she's got, she just answers it right away. And everyone is so excited in the sky world because the chief is finally, you know, he's got his woman, right? And, uh, and she's taken up in it, and she's like caught in, like it's just such a celebration. But she's already in love with another man, and she's already pregnant with his baby. Now, of course, she knows that the chief, he knows all this stuff, so she has to tell him. Now, so she does tell him. And so he talks to the, the, to the guy who, who, who made her pregnant. He says, okay, you know what? When we come up on this new world, right? He says, she's always going down to the pond to look at how beautiful she is, like a mirror did, right? And she really is so beautiful. So, you know, when he's the, the chief and, and the, the guy who made her pregnant, they make a plan. Okay, when she's looking in the pond, when we're passing by this new world, where, where we're on now, people, it was all covered in water. We're going to open up the pond and she's going to fall through the pond. We're going to trick her and she's going to fall down to the earth. So he sends... The, the father who or the guy who made her pregnant down to this to to this earth world as a spirit being so he goes down and he talks to the animals that are here like the the um the, the um the geese he tells them she's going to fall from the sky you need to fall you need to form a v to catch her and bring her down he tells the turtle to come up from the sea and let her land on your back so the geese they bring her down that's how come they now fly in a v formation because that what they were taught then so then they bring her down and they land her on the turtle's back. And then so she, the, all the um, like the otters and everything like that, they're all there. And she needs to get one piece of dirt from the bottom of the water. That's all she needs is one handful. So they all try the muskrat and all these other animals. And all of them die. They can't get down. And the muskrat, he's the only one. He comes up with one handful of dirt. He hands it to her. Then he dies. And she walks around that turtle, just putting one grain at a time. And starts walking around and creating Turtle Island, North America. The first land out of the water. So the very first land out of the water, the oldest rock in the world, you can confirm this by Google, is the Canadian Shield. It is the oldest rock in the world, period. This is the first land out of the water. So Sky Woman is here. She's pregnant. Now her, her daughter comes. And her and her daughter just go around and they building. Turtle Island, they're, they they got all the seeds and they're, they're they're putting everything together. And this goes on for, well, a whole passing again of the sky world. So 3,700 years they're here. And Turtle Island is the only land out of the water in the first time. So then the next passing of the sky world, the daughter ends up getting pregnant, obviously from artificial insemination because there's no man, right? But the sky world is there. so. So the the daughter is now pregnant at so that's one sky world. I'm gonna I'm trying to give you a timeline of how long we've been here. So the, there's five times since men has been here, but there was two times before that. That's what I'm trying to get to, right? On our origin story. So we can only go back. So five, so seven times thirty seven hundred. That's how long we've been here. No longer, the Earth did not exist. So. You know, that's where our origin story starts, right there. And then, so then on the second passing of the sky world, when her daughter became pregnant, when her daughter bore her children, she had twins. One came out her side and killed her, and one came out normally. So now it was the sky woman, the grandmother, with her two twins, her, her grandchildren. And the sky woman, you know, she always thought that the one that came out the side was the one that, that came out regular. And so, you know, she sort of, you know, she had a wrong idea of who killed her daughter, right? So that the good twin and the bad twin, that story comes to mind. So as they were busy making Turtle Island before they made men and making everything right, so the, the good, the young good one, he, he'd go around, he'd make all the good things, you know, in nature, you know, this will do this. And then the bad one would come around and make viruses and everything to screw up his, his brother. They always competed. The, good, the twins, they always competed. So then it was time to make men, right? So this is 
One passing is just a sky woman and she has her daughter. Second passing, her daughter gets pregnant, has twins, and then then it's the grandmother and the twins. So there's two. Now they make men on this one. So this is the third. So it's eight sons. That's how long we've been here. But when they make the men, when it's time to make men now, so from from the deep black earth, they make the black man. From the red clay, they make the red man. From the bark of the elm tree, they make the yellow man. The last brother made from the salt in the ocean is the white brother, the four races of men. That's what's on our medicine wheel. You'll see like a dream catcher with a cross. That's our medicine wheel. It shows four directions on Mother Earth, the four races of men, four sacred medicines, tobacco being number one. Mm -hmm. People don't get that. Tobacco is the most important medicine because Sky Woman, when she was tricked, she had, she grabbed on thinking she, you know, support us up, grabbed the tobacco plant and fell to the earth with that in her hand. That's why it's the most important medicine. That's the only reason because it comes from the sky world. And its, and its purpose is to communicate through all of nature. So you can watch a tobacco plant grow. When, when you'll see an insect will start eating its leaves, don't do anything, just watch. The tobacco will put out a message. And within three or four days, the exact predator of that exact insect will be there and clean it all up for the tobacco plant. It communicates with everything in nature. That's what it's for. So when you hold it in your hand, when you always see us offering tobacco, always, for, take anything from nature. I take some cedar because it's one of the sacred medicines. And I talk to the cedar plant and I say, thank you for doing what creation asks you to do. And I'm going to take your medicine and offer tobacco. And I give tobacco and I take the medicine. That's the only way it works. If you don't do that, you don't got anything. You haven't got anything but pretend. <laughs> you have to be absolutely in tune with nature. I mean, because we're all part of this. It starts with the good message that here on this earth, all living things, every living thing has the same mother. She's the earth. Look at every bit of your DNA is from this earth and every other living thing, too. We all have the same father. He's the source energy of all creation. The, the chi, I guess the Chinese call it chi, right? Source energy. That's that's the father. So that makes us all brothers and sisters. This is the good message that we are that, that is the basis of the great law. It's based so, on that. so when they created the four races, what happens then? Well, okay, so that would be all right, one one turn of the sky row is just the, the sky woman and her woman, then the next turn the, the daughter gets pregnant, has the twins, that's one whole. So the third time that the sky world is here, then the races of men are created. Now they're all raised here on Turtle Island, all four, until the next passing of the sky world, when the other lands came out of the water, the other continents, Africa, Asia, and, and Europe came out, you know? And so Sky Woman and the twins, they said, okay, they, they took the black man, put him on in Africa, said, you will return home to Turtle Island one day. Took the other man, put him on another part of the world, Asia. Said, you will return home to Turtle Island one day. Took the white man, put him on another part of the world, Russia, Caucasus. And said, you will return home to Turtle Island one day. Left the red man here on Turtle Island and said, you take care of Turtle Island for when your brothers come home. Now, that, now we go right back from that time to when Cabot arrived off the coast of New Brunswick in 1504. And the Micmac are having some huge party, bonfire, feast, and they're all they're singing and chanting, welcome home, younger brother. That's what they're saying. When they came to us, we said, welcome home, younger brother, when they got up to St. Lawrence to us. And, they're all, and they didn't ever try. They still haven't learned our language. <laughs> and so the Cabot told the king of England, he said, they think we're some type of gods. We can take them in six months. <laughs> That's all we've ever been saying. Welcome home, younger brothers. And they brought the war back with them. See, because we lived for 3,700 years, all the nations right here since the last time of the sky world, when the Gunnawita brought us the peace. And that's the formula of the clan system that we all run on. North, South America, it's all clan systems. Female-based clan systems. Their okay. lives. Now, you've just gotten into... One of my other, you and I discussed this, and I found this so amazing, Dagonawida. 
absolutely the story that no one knows that you need to know i mean it's the most this important is, story there is is an incredible story and i would really like you to tell everyone about this because i it's so relevant to this moment right absolutely. now absolutely and you will see when the sky world comes back google Earth just opened the sky in google sky they had blacked out the part where nibiru is that's what they call the sky world and they just opened it up yesterday did you see that Yes. Oh, yeah. I was reading a whole pile of stuff about you're that. Gonna you're going to see it with your eyes soon in the sky. The sky world coming. I wrote a story about five years ago. I go, the sky world coming. That's what I called it on my site. One of the interesting little pieces was the fact that it is viewable purportedly now from Antarctica. Absolutely. Well, where's the one place on the planet no one is allowed to go? Oh, would that be Antarctica? Have you studied um, what Admiral Byrd did there in 47? Oh, yes. We've had many, many discussions about that. You know, that is where the Anunnaki are. Now, so now that takes us back to our creation story. How did the Earth end up here covered in water? What, only less than 30,000 years ago? How did that happen? So, what's the Earth? Well, there was a planet. And it was called Tiamat. Sitchin wrote all about it because of the hieroglyphs in Iraq. Cuneiform, I guess they call it. But that planet, Tiamat, is now the the asteroid belt. It got slowed right up. Now, why did that happen? Okay, so then you go back again. So the Anunnaki, the ones who, um, they were the last of the evil in our galaxy. In ancient stuff, now we're going back before the Earth was created. So this is uh, antediluvian history, before the flood on, on the Earth, right? So the Tiamat, you can see its remnants now, it, it, it got blowed right up. Because that was the last place that the Anunnaki lived. And they were the last evil in our galaxy. So they're pursuers on the sky world every 3,700 years. Okay, so Tiamat... On Tiamat was where all the evil was. So they blew up the whole friggin' planet to kill the Anunnaki and get rid of the evil in our galaxy. Except they, they got underground in one of those poles and they survived. So one of the parts of Tiamat settled into the orbit of what is now the Earth. Piece of Earth, where all the dinosaur bones are, they never lived on the Earth. Tiamat was 10 times the size of the Earth. No, 100 times the size of the Earth. So. The dinosaurs were so big because the land was 10 times the size of Earth, you, you know, 100 times. So that's why they were so big. They never lived on this Earth right here. They lived when Earth was a part of Tiamat. So understand that. I mean, the Earth, where does it come from? From the asteroid belt. It was part of that planet that got blowed up. But on the next passing of the sky world, the people, the watchers, they called them in, in the ancient Hebrew thing, they noticed that, hey, you know what? They survived. They got inside one of the poles underground and survived. That's where they are still to this day at the South Pole, in the Earth, hollow Earth. So that's how they survived the blowing up. So now, so then the watchers, they put up the Van Allen radiation belt as an electric fence to keep the Anunnaki here. And the moon is nothing more than a um, guardhouse for the Anunnaki here on Earth. It's not, it's not real. It's not yeah. real. No. Absolutely. It's, you know, come off of it. You only see one side. What, has it got a tether? Yeah, that's the only way it could happen, with a tether. You only see one side. It does have a tether. It's not real. It's not a real moon. Well, you know, it's it's very interesting. You it, We're totally getting off topic, but that's what happens when I do interviews. Um, big piece of information came out this week. I don't know if you follow Dutch since talking yep. about NASA draining the radiation out of yep. the first Van Allen belt. Yeah, because they know the only way they can get out of here is to get rid of that electric gate that's keeping them here. No one has ever gotten out. Nothing. You know, they can send unmanned spacecraft out. That's all. No, they never went to the moon. It never happened. No man has been through the Van Allen radiation belt. They announced that. Six months ago, a NASA video came out saying that, saying the we so to admit the fact. So yeah. draining it now to get out to us because they know Skyworld comes back real soon, and they're dead 
because they did so they've been kept here trapped here with us and with us with the native people so that they could learn about love because that's really gonna run in 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 the hug in mohawk gonna run is the source love and Guyana at goa that's our law of peace it comes from the word gonna run from love but this is the one law you know it's about love okay so we're going to jump back again and talk about the first piece and, I, and that story that we that you told me because like i said everyone i've spoken to about that is all like oh i do want to hear that story so okay so 1701 let's go back yes. to that story yes in june of 1701 the french had been fighting the iroquois for 90 90 since 1607 to 1701 that's how long we'd been fighting the french the iroquois and the french in indian wars they called it and uh so they they said okay we want peace so we said okay so we had in june for a whole month it lasted the great peace of montreal 1701 48 nations from across great turtle island now with their alliances represented all 500 nations in north and south america so we were all present at montreal to make peace with France. And we did the great peace of Montreal and offered them to stay with us here based on the De Ojade, the two row wampum agreement, and they which they agreed upon. And so that first peace conference, and then we buried our, our weapons of war with France. We buried it under the Great Tree of Peace, just like the Gunnawita did 3,700 years previous. And uh, we did that with them. And we had never ever had any more fights with France after that. And then we went right down to Albany because the British 15 years earlier had taken over the Dutch colonies. We'd had a, a hundred year relationship with them and a good relationship, the Mohawk and the Dutch. Albany's right across the river from where I'm from, the Lower Castle Mohawk, at the Mohawk River and the Albany River. Right there is where I'm from back in the day, right? And uh, so the, the uh, in July of that year, we went down to Albany with the two row and we gave it to the British. We said, okay, we've made peace with the French after 92 years uh, of war. Now we want to offer you English people to come and share our land in Ontario, Ontario. You can come and share this land. We have had a war with the Hurons, the Wendat, and we have cleaned it all up now. We, we've established peace now for 50 years. You can move your people in there and you can come under the Deohad, the, the Gushwenta agreement which is based on the Guyana Red Goa and about living, coexisting between different cultures on this land right here. That's what it's about. And it's a 50-50 split on everything. Two roads, no one leading, no one following. That's the way it is, 50-50. Now that's with all the money. So that 50-50 split since 1701 is worth $900 trillion now that they've never paid a penny on. So all your whole financial, the bankers out of London, they're surviving on our stolen loot. We want it all, 900 trillion right now. <laughs> I mean, are we gonna get it? Yeah. No, unless yeah. the rest of the world yeah. doesn't yeah. provide you all the money, pay up. Yeah, and yeah. the yeah, I know. charged with genocide of what they did in the residential schools up here. Mm -hmm. The TRC has just proved that the Crown is absolutely guilty, 100% of genocide. Yeah, so and they use the, the word genocide, London. which the Crown is the city of London. Yep. And, they and like I said, all Admiralty courts right there too. So yep. you can't charge them there. <laughs> yeah, I know, and that that leads us oh so many rabbit holes. Yeah, absolutely. Like said, We're going to have you on the round table because you and I are going to jump some rabbit holes together because oh. God, there's some good ones to go into. Um, I'd like you to tell the story of Gundawaya. The Gundawida. So the last time the Sky World came, that's when the Gundawida came. Right. About 3,700 years ago. I'll tell you the story about him as a child, because he's one of these guys, immaculate conception guys, which is nothing more than test tube babies. I mean, we know how to do it now ourselves, right? But anyway, so he was one of them. So in a huron village on the north shore of lake ontario which is now where tyndanega where i'm where my children my grandchildren live right there 
in that village, this is the time 3,700 3, years ago, everyone was at war. Mohawk were fighting Mohawk. Every, it was wars amongst all the tribes at that time. So this woman, she had a daughter who was like 15. So she left the village because she thought she'll go up the creek and make her own way, plant her own corn with her and her daughter and just get away. She can't survive and she doesn't feel safe. Everyone's killing each other. So her and her daughter, they, they make a nice little place for themselves. They got their corn planted. And things are going well for them for a couple of years when all of a sudden her daughter ends up pregnant. And the, the woman is like, what? What the hell? What man? She didn't even see a man come by. And the daughter's like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I haven't seen, I don't know, mother. And so the mother did not believe the daughter and was really upset with her. And then it was coming time the baby was going to be born. And so the, the mother was saying, it's not right. There's no man. You got a baby. That's just, you have to kill that baby. She's telling her daughter. So, uh, the daughter has the baby and so the mother tells so the daughter goes out and puts the baby in the bay in the bay of quinny and uh so wakes up the next morning baby suckling on her breast the mother comes out and says i told you to put that baby in the bay and she says i did mom and i wake up and she's, she's on my breast so the grandmother the mother of the daughter the grandmother of the daughter read it she says okay i'll take care of it myself so then she's going to do it the next morning but that night she has a vision uh, a voice comes to her and tells her he's coming right from creation and he, this baby is not, your daughter is not lying to you, you know, that I did this to your daughter. This baby has a special purpose. He will be, he will, you will watch him. He will grow very fast. He will, and he will have amazing things. You just keep him. His name will be the Gunawida and no one will ever use that name but him ever again. No one ever has. And uh, so then um, the grandmother comes to her daughter. She says, I'm sorry, my daughter. You know, I know you were telling me the truth. And, and the daughter now is, you know, they're all, okay, now they have this baby. So the bunny weed grows really fast. Like in three months, he's already like a six-year-old, right? And so they take him down to the village when he's six. He's only three months old, but he looks like a six-year-old. And the people of the village, he's watching the kids that are all his age. And how they're all fighting. That's how they're playing, right? So he teaches them. And, and the adults are listening to and watching the Ganoida. And he's the first one that ever said, like he was amazed at, at the way he said, look, you should never, you should love a stranger like a friend and love a friend like family. So that was, no one had ever heard those words. And everyone was like, wow, this kid comes up with that. So that was the Ganoida when he was three months old, but he looked like he was six. So then he just kept growing. Him and his grandmother and the mother, they went back to the village. And the Ganawita would go out in the morning. Now, all of a sudden, he's like a teenager, just after a few months. And he'd go out in the morning, and he'd be gone all day. And he'd come home, and his grandmother and his mother, they'd make dinner. No talking. He'd never talk, and they wouldn't talk either. And he'd eat his dinner, go to bed. Next day, he'd be up at dawn and out, and he'd, the same thing. It was going on just for, like, a couple of months. So then. Uh, he tells the grandmother and the mother when he comes home the, the last night, first time he ever talked, okay, tomorrow I will show you the stone canoe that I built. And so then he takes his grandmother and his mother down to the bay where he had built a stone canoe. So he gets them to help him to get it to the shore. And the mother saying, surely you're going to sink in the stone canoe. And so anyways, the going to be says, okay. He goes to the tree. There's a tree there. I can take you to the same place where he left and he cuts the tree he says you see sweet sap flowing from this tree he says i'm going on my journey you won't ever see me again he says so if you want to know if i'm successful you cut the tree if it breeds sweet sap you know i'm my my um my my venture has been a success and if it has red you know i i failed and i'm done so he, he his mother and his grandmother watch and they say he made two paddles with two paddles and the, the canoe was right across Lake Ontario. That's how fast it went. It was an alien spacecraft, obviously. But anyways, uh, so then on the next side of the lake, on the south shore, Ainuata, Hiawatha, you might have heard of. Ainuata is uh, his war chief's out there and, he's, and uh, he sees a 
stone canoe rapidly approaching and a guy comes out and wants to talk to to the chief and the people and so he goes and tells Ayanwata. he says he's got he wants to talk to the people he has three things he wants to tell and he comes and he's got a message from creation from some way he's from creation and uh so um Ian Walker comes out with the people and they're all sitting there and they're going to be just saying, okay, I have three things I want to tell you. The good message, the power, the peace. So Ian Walker says, okay, you come from creation. He said, yeah. Climb up to, there was a tall white pine, a 300 foot white pine over the Coho's Falls on the Mohawk River. So he says, you climb up to the top of that tree then. So Don Ganawita goes up to the top of the tree, tells his warriors, cut down the tree. So they chop down the tree. Everyone watches as the Ganawita falls into the cavern of the Coho's Falls. Hundreds of people, all obviously he's dead. And so Ian Wata says, Okay, everyone back home, just another guy claiming to be from creation, you know, whatever. And uh, so next day, War Chief sees the smoke signal, so he goes out and he comes running back, says, It's the Ganawita. He says he wants to tell us three things. So now they all come out, they're all saying, Okay, we're listening, right? And he tells the good message I already told you. And then he talks about the power, the power of one mind of the unity of the mind to eliminate any disagreement right here so this is the power of the of the one mind and then the peace which is once you have the one mind the rules about continuing along like guyana red is 117 wampum and it puts the women properly in their place as in nature in nature it's the women who run the communities all communities in nature like rabbits, any of them, deers. It's the women. The men, they're around the outside taking care of the women and the children. That's all they do. They come in once a year to get laid if they're good. So they're always good for that once a year. But that's the way it's supposed to be in all of nature. So that's what Diana Red Koa puts the women in their proper place. Like in all nature, all communities are run by the Council of Women. They own the children and the land they bring them into, the community. The community exists of every plant, every tree, every four-legged, every winged one. All creation in your area is your community. That's women business. Right. The men, we're supposed to be on the outside, make sure no one eps with our women or they're dead. That's what we do. So it's women. And this is the whole thing. When, when they came over here and they created the fake first false flag war called the American Revolution, it was just to take out the women. That's all. The clan system. And replace it with a party system, which is artificial clan, which is ruled by men. You see? My goodness, that's another rabbit hole we could talk a month on. But this is the key, is getting back to putting the women in their proper place in the consensual decision-making process. And so with Guyana Red Koa, we come to one mind on every issue, not 51%. If we get 51%, we go right back at it. Let's go again. Until we become of one mind at the table, at the fire, at the circle. No, let's go at it again. Okay, we can't become of one mind. Put it back in the well for discussion later. Let's go on to the next issue. And that's how it works. We don't ever do. If you're 51%, you're half done. You're halfway finished. No, the American, uh, American, uh, yeah, I guess it is American, isn't it? Uh, but the model of 51%, that is so that the war never, ever, ever stops. Because you got the people divided right down the middle. It's a no-brainer, 51%. So divide down the middle, the war never ends. The war never will end until you get rid of the 51% in the mind. And this is the what Guyana Red Gold shows us. So whatever issue you have, it has you have a well keeper in the process. And you have your clan mother. So the clans are the Mohawk. We'll use that example. This is how clan-based system works. In the Mohawk, we have three clans. We have the turtle clan, the wolf clan, and the bear clan. So in all deliberations, the turtle clan and the well keeper, they draw the issue out of the well. And as long as the issue affects everyone in the community, then it goes into the well. So whatever issues draws out, First, the turtle clan mother will bring out, okay, went into the well like this, people. How do we see this? And they will talk. And the turtle clan will go at it until they become a one mind on the issue. They will go everywhere. Here's how it works. Like you've heard of a talking stick? Right. 
your volume. I can't hear you. I just had myself muted out because oh. the wind is picking up again. So okay. I don't want the wind blowing around and making it too much noise. Okay. All right. Now uh, I can't remember where I was. The talking stick. Oh, the talking stick. It's a, it's a good principle because that's how it works in, in, when you're in town. Talking stick. So every one of us has two eyes, two ears, one mouth. We never really get that. But when you're in town, whoever has the stick, whoever has the floor, everyone, two eyes, two ears. Listen, no talking, no thinking. You don't sit there in, in your mind thinking, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that. When you're doing that, you're not even listening. You have to learn how to listen. Okay? So every one of us has to listen to every person to hear how everyone else sees it. Now when it comes to me, I have a much different view on what we're talking about in the middle. You see, because I've listened to everyone else. Now I can say, you know what? I think this. And every one of us has to do that. Then when we, okay, we all agree. This is how it all works. On every issue, we can all become of one mind. This True is the consensus. True consensus. Yes. It, one yeah. mind. No. I agree. If you don't stop at 51%, or the war will never end. Yep. You keep going to get one mind. Then there'll be no more war, period. No more war. Isn't that what we all want, peace? I think we do. Yes, the big piece. Except for those people in the city of London. They want nothing but war, rape, murder, pillage, and they're doing it. Yeah. For the money. For the money. Yes. And like I said, that's another whole other story. Yeah. Um, so, Duganda Weha. Okay, so Duganda Weha. When he first came, the Mohawk were the first, the Vinyongi Haga were the first to accept the great peace. And it happened really swiftly, too. Jigo Sazi was the first woman who formed the woman council. First woman council of the Mohawk. And it happened like this. She had two warring Mohawk uh, factions. One over here, one over here. And they were always fighting and killing each other. They were in she was in between them. She was never taking sides. When these people over here would get killed and and maimed, she'd heal them and feed them. When these people over here, she'd do the same for both sides. So she thought she was being neutral in their war or whatever. And the Gunnawida explained to her, he said, you know, Jogosasi, you're the head woman of this community. And the woman, you know, in nature, this is how it runs with community, explain what I explained to you. He says, so what you need to do is take your right as women and anyone who is engaging in war in any way is not allowed in your community for any reason. You don't even want to, you can't even hear their words. That's how it works. And you will put an end to the war. So Jigosazi, she forms her first council of women. Anyone now, this is a guy in Red Corps, anyone who is engaging to make war continue, that 51% is what war is. Anyone who is doing that, is not allowed in the community at all to interact at all. So she formed that first councilwoman right there in her community. The peace took hold there. And then within months, every single na community in all the Mohawk nations all accepted the great peace within months. Now the Mohawk were at peace. We were fighting Mohawk against Mohawk for hundreds of years. So now we're all at peace. So now, well, I thank you to Benavita. And then, uh, so then we, we, we go with the Gurnawida, Ayn Wat and a couple of the other Moab chiefs. They go to the Oneida, who are also at war with each other and with us. But we went now are at peace with each other and we want to become peace with them. And we explain it to them. And they become the second nation to accept the great peace. So now the Gurnawida, Ayn Wat and the Oneida chiefs, they go down to Onondaga. Now in Onondaga, and in the Oneida, remember how we had the miracle you know, Jugunawita chopped down and came back to life. And then either they had the same thing. He formed Onondaga, the same thing. He combed the snakes out of Tadadaho's hair. Tadadaho is now the head chief of the Confederacy of the fire. He's like the firekeeper of the Confederacy. But, you know, that was the miracle he performed with the Onondaga. And then the Cayuga were the fourth. And the fifth nation was the Seneca. Now, what he did with the Seneca, now the sky world was almost here, so he he was running out of time to So 
the Seneca, they had they had heard everything from all four of our nations. How we, we've all got peace now, and, and you know, come into our confederacy, the first confederacy of multiple nations as one. And uh, so the Seneca weren't sure. They were the most populous of the of the people. They had more. They had you know, twice as many warriors as the Cayuga and the Pondaga. And uh, so they weren't sure. So the Ganawita says, on the plains above Niagara Falls, right there, he says, okay, you don't, you don't know if you want to accept, if tomorrow, if tomorrow you see two suns in the sky, will you then accept the great peace? So the Seneca talk amongst themselves, you know what? If it, there's two suns in the sky, we will accept the great peace. Like, that doesn't happen, right? So the next day, two suns in the sky. And the Seneca become the fifth nation to join the Confederacy. But the Gunnawid has got to go. So he tells us the two servant prophecies before he gets in his stone canoe and flies to the sky world. This is 3,700 years ago. He says, okay, there's going to come a time in the future when the Ongwahoe, the natural people, when they're befriended by a white serpent. And at first it will be good between the white serpent and the Ongwahoe. But then after seven generations of contact, the white serpent will have the Ongwahoe squeezed so tight against his chest that they can hardly breathe. And then a red serpent will appear from the north and the, and the white serpent will momentarily drop the Ongwahoe. He will fall to the ground like a baby and crawl to the hilly country to heal. Then the white serpent and the red serpent will get into a fierce, unbelievable battle. They would tear open holes in Mother Earth. The fish will turn on their bellies in the water. The air will burn the eyes of men. The elm trees will all die. The birds will fall from the sky. This is the type of war the white and red serpent will be having. And then they will, it will sort of be they were at a lull. They not will finish. This war will always continue. And, and they'll sort of be not knowing what to do, the white and the red serpent, for a little while. When a black serpent will come down from the south because of some false messages he had been given, and he will take over what the white and the red serpent has been doing all along, and then he will continue to go to, uh, and make war against every nation on earth, one after the other. Always he will be busy as he's doing one war, looking to see who's next. Remind you of NATO and America, right? So, anyways, that's what the black serpent will be doing, and. Uh, he will always continue one war, just nonstop war. And then he will be looking around to see who's next. And he will only see the Ongwahoe healing in the hilly country. And he will say, I have no fight with them. Then a bright light, many times brighter than the sun, will come from the east. And the black serpent will see the light. He will be fearful. He will swim south, never again to be seen by the Ongwahoe. The red serpent will be fearful. He will crawl north leaving a snaily trail behind, never again to be seen by the Ongwahoe. The white serpent, part of his tail, will break off, crawl to the hilly country to heal with the Ongwahoe, and the rest of him will make a feeble attempt to swim toward the light. The light shall be the return of the sky world, which I am going to, and I will return when the sky world comes back. And the next time, we will have peace on earth. That's what the Ganawea said. Then he got in the stone canoe and flew to the sky world. He said, we'll see you when you get back. And guess what? I, I tell other Mohawks this. He'll only be one year old. And they go, what do you mean? I said, okay, it's time space continuum. When you're in the sky world, they're moving 3,700 times faster than us. They're in the future. They're going so fast we can't even see them. We can't see in the future yet. We'll see them just briefly when they come here. And then they go again. And the world will start spinning the other way. That's what happens on this day. But, uh, The Ganawida will only be one year older because when you're on the sky world, every year you have two suns in the sky. Every year. They're going so much faster than us. Every year they have two suns in the sky. Every 3,700 years here, we have two suns. But now it takes us back to um, the Schumann frequency and all this, right? I don't know if you're 7.8. All of a sudden it's 15, right? M Mother Earth raised it by an octave, her, her tone, her note. She's going to raise it a lot more, I think. I think we're going to start to speed up, and it, this is how evolution happens, you know? We're going to evolve. Well, is what it's it is. so funny because the speeding up of time, I mean, everyone is, that's, 
probably one of the most common conversations I've had in the last year is that time is speeding up. You, what was once a day now feels like it's six hours that you try and get, the, I, every single day I'm like, okay, I've got to do this, this, and this. And then I look at the clock and go, what do you mean it's five o'clock? How the hell did it become five o'clock already? It's not possible. Speaking yeah, it's, it, everyone's been noticing that, you know, and oh, or, yes. or people have been noticing, you know what, something just doesn't seem right. Guess what? Because Earth used to sing, now she's singing, that's what it is. Everyone's going, something right. It's the note. She's singing a different note. You can hear it. Well, I mean, most people, no, it's so low. 7.8 hertz is so low. I mean, zero hertz is an explosion. Yeah. 7.8 is just above that. You know, that's how low the earth note the thing is. You only hear it if you have special, you know, instruments. You don't no, hear that. you can hear it. Hear it energetically, if you will. There's been a you shift in, in that frequency. Yeah, it's I guess, frequency. yeah. Waves, right? Feel it. Yes, that's a better way of putting it, is feel it, not necessarily heard it. Yes. Absolutely. So, the sky world is returning. The sky world will be here. I figured two more years is all we got. But NASA is making these new huge announcements. That's what they're saying. And you can see the winged disc now, fair eye in the sky. So, it might be, I'm thinking two years on the solstice. When the Seneca accepted the great peace was summer solstice. Ah, oh, so which thinking, just passed. It just passed, so it's not this year, and it's too far out. I think 2017, Sky World will be here. Oh, I really wish you hadn't said that. I have so many people saying 2017. It's like, you know, it doesn't work with my schedule. Can we do it tomorrow? <laughs> well, what's going to happen when the Sky World comes back? It's carved in stone in a book called Worlds in Collision by Manuel Velikovsky. You can read this. Don't believe me, but read smart guys like him. Now, it's carved in stone in North America, in Hopi, in Central America, in Mayan, in South America, in Inca. You can read this carving in stone all over down there. And it says, 3,700 years ago, the sun rose in the west, then went down in the west. When it rose again, it rose in the east. And all the forest burned. That's carved in Incan, in Mayan, and in Hopi. In stone, 3,700 years ago. There's your evidence. So the world is going to start spinning the other way. Now, us, when we dance around the fire, the Vinyangi Hag, we dance counterclockwise around the fire. Every fire. Because that's the way the earth spins. Now, we used to dance clockwise until the Ganawita spun the earth the other way. Well, the sky world spun it the other way. So now we know, okay, when Sky World comes back, we have to start dancing the other way around the fire. Uh, I mean, it's basic, simple stuff that a child could figure out, you know? You, you, I don't know if you have any powwows you went to, I don't know. But most of these dancers are Anishinaabe, and like in Ontario, they're not even Vinyangi, they're not even like Haudenosaunee, um, Iroquois, you know? And we, when they come to Tyndanaga, you know, I remember the first powwow I went to, but it's a government creation, this powwow. Mm -hmm. Which is why I would never go to them, because I, I was told by native friends of mine, of like, no, it's just a, a circus. Yeah, it's a circus the government's doing, like the Queen Anne Bread Day, or Queen uh, Victoria's Bread and Honey Day they used to have for us, and stuff like this. Yeah. You know, the government's doing something for us. Right. No, they're doing nothing for us. They never have, but kill us and steal everything we got. That's all they've ever done, you know. And and they don't ever want to be even talk about that, you know. As yeah. The PRC and reconciliation, all. right? Right. Yeah. Reconciliation. Not to be yeah, there. Charge the, the crown. Charge the crown with genocide. Yeah. The crown is the Vatican and the city of London. That's the crown. So. Exactly. Oh, listen, I've been doing muchy, muchy studies, strangely enough, on exactly the subject of the crown and all of that fun stuff. No, not fun stuff. I think my brain the is... Evil. Are my these evil. are the most evil. And so they are evil. So they are the Anunnaki who were placed here with us so that we could heal them with love. All right. I mean, look at the Beatles, John Lennon. All you need is love. I mean, uh, you know what? He had it right on the head, you know? 
and that's why he was killed. That's why he's not by here. By the London bankers. They killed yeah. him. Well, FBI COINTELPRO. You heard of this? Yeah. Right. So they were designed apparently for the Black Panther movement in the 68. But the first the first thing they did is start targeting rock stars because it just tied right in. And FBI COINTELPRO, if you ever see this movie called Jimi Hendrix, The Last 24 Hours, it just shows you how they killed him. I mean, mm -hmm. he was like the second one they got. Ryan Jones being the first one, and then they got Hendrix, and then they got Morrison, and then they got uh, uh, Janis Joplin, and then they got Bon Scott, ACDC's original singer. People forget that one in 78. He died mm -hmm. three blocks from where Hendrix died, exactly the same way, probably the same murderer. Held him down and poured wine down his throat until his lungs filled up. Yep. Same way. They both died like that. Both Bond, Scott, and Jimmy Hendrix. So the same murderer, probably. The exact same guy killed both of them. So, I mean, and it doesn't end. I mean, John Lennon, they got, you know, yeah, they had to get him. Because he just... Oh, there's so, many, there's so many pieces to that, especially with John Lennon and, of course, the Paul McCartney. I, yeah. We could do a whole, a whole three-hour show just talking about just that aspect of it. It's just crazy, right? And, you know, it's like, like I always say, the rabbit hole is deep. And the yeah, deeper absolutely. you go, the deeper it becomes. And the more rabbit holes open out underneath yeah, your feet. Absolutely. You so it's uh, I like to tell it's people. Adventure. Absolutely. I like to tell people when they ask me for advice on, you know, just generally. And I say, look, keep a good mind. Don't let bad thoughts come into your mind. And stay on the path. The path to peace, you know, because that's all I want. We all want peace. I want peace on earth, like no more war. We don't need it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's barbaric. We will not evolve as a people until we end this killing of our own kind. Slaughter, yes. like barbaric. And it, yep. it's just it's because. The, well, as you said, we're all brothers and sisters. Absolutely. And, no, and, 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 and when was the last time you talked to the plants or the birds? Like I do it quite often in our house. <laughs> no, no, but actually talk to the plants. Like they are waiting for you to do this, and it's just with thought. Now people go on about the speed of light, right? And I don't know if you heard that Einstein. It was just announced that, and it was published what four years ago by the Science foundation whatever they are that einstein was off by 186,000 times on his calculations of the speed of light did you hear that yeah i a little bit about it and i kind of went oh god please i don't want to talk about the speed of light well here no no this is very interesting because there was a dakota medicine man who published that exact figure in 98 he published and he gives you all his calculations on time right on, on light and everything like that and a child could figure it out the way Meredith Quinn did it. And this is a name you might want to remember. And uh, so he published in 98 that Einstein was off by 186,000 times on his calculations of the speed of light. That was just because I'm telling you about our creation story. He was trying to say, no, 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 we haven't been here that long. And so yeah. he published that. And they killed him. They killed him shortly after. And then, what, two years ago or last year, they published his findings. And took credit for it. Of course. Yeah. But I'm just saying, Meredith Quinn, a Dakota medicine man, and I read his calculations on light and time, and I thought it was brilliant. And a child could figure this out, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Always. A child should be able to figure it all out in nature. So, well, you know what? It's one of my most favorite expressions. Um, there's a gentleman I've spoken to a couple of times and interviewed named Ralph Ring. And one of the things he said, and he's an inventor and has been uh, worked on incredible projects. And one of the things he said, he said, said to me one time, he says, you know what? If it's not simple, you're not doing it right. Yeah, absolutely. It's always simple. It's, simple. it's like, especially with um, the um, like health of your body. It's so simple. Like in my yard, I, you know, you know, plantain that, that we yep. right yep. It grows everywhere in the cracks of sidewalks in Toronto. All right, this is the most powerful medicine. That's why it's everywhere. 
Because it's such a power. Well, people don't even get it. They're all putting weed killer. Like I plant, I put, I have a couple big ones so that I can get some nice good leaves. So when I, and then I'll put one of them, two of those leaves in my smoothie in the morning. Yep. And that's good medicine. Now, if you ever have any cold, any cold sores or any mosquito bites, anything itchy on your skin, ah, plantain is all you need. And, you know, just simple stuff like this that people just, well, oh, I talk to your doctor. I'll talk to your doctor. So your doctor won't even tell you about hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Yeah, One they won't tell you about anything unless they can sell you a drug. Right. The best the best drugs, the best medicine drugs are baking soda, hydrogen peroxide. Nothing better than those two things. Yep. One will balance out your, your pH, and the other one will take will balance out anything that's foreign out of the body. O2. The extra part of oxygen will oxidize, turn into water, anything that's not part of the body. So yep. your ears. How many yep. how do you clean your earwax? With, uh, peroxide absolutely you know what so I, I never I had to figure this one out myself so I guess about 10 yeah 10 years ago I always got this earwax right and I remember doing candle you know the candles you ever see like this goofy stuff and uh, all of a sudden it just blocks right up I have to go to the hospital because I can't hear they blow it out and like a pea sized hard ball of Yep. Back from pushing it in with q uh -huh. So I'm like, oh my God, right? So then on my own, I just pour and I, the hydrogen peroxide in my ear, and I hear it fizzes. <laughs> pour it again, it's still fizzing. You can hear it. And then no more fizzing, it's clean, right? And I, all yellow water. I'm thinking, ah. So I go back to my doctor, who used to be a friend of mine. You know, we golfed together. Our kid, I spent the night with my kids at his house, stuff like that. I said, Bob. Why didn't you just tell me to clean my ear with hydrogen peroxide? What? I told him. Why? You better start telling me. Oh, no, because he blows it out with his little tool in his office and charges you 150 bucks. Yep. That's why he's not telling you. Right. Well, you know what? This is one of the things. Being here in northern Africa, um, Morocco is, is very much untouched. And it's one of the incredible things is the plants that just grow wild. Um, and we have a family that we're working with who is distilling essential oils. And yes. how are they doing it? They they bought a proper stainless, like they went and got a stainless steel distilling because they wanted to be able to sell and keep it absolutely sterile. They can get the oil. They're gathering, they're gathering heritage plants, the wild Moroccan rosemary that has been growing in the mountains for thousands of years untouched by chemicals, untouched by GMO, untouched by pesticides. And they use it for everything. And it's the same thing with their olive oil that they make, not the crap that you see in stores in Europe and North America, but proper olive oil. And they, they use it for healing skin. They use it for, for medicine. They use it for everything because it's what the body needs. And the body tells you what yeah, you need. Absolutely. I just discovered coconut oil and like... Something. Oh my God! I, 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 it's I, awesome stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. You know, for cleaning oh. your teeth, unbelievable. Yep. Like for making your teeth healthy. Yep. You know, building the bones. I guess is what it does. I don't know. But I just found out about that like in the last two years. Oh, we don't have coconuts growing here. You know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to grow them in a Canadian winter. Yeah. yeah. Strangely after, enough, after the pole shift, things are going to look pretty good up in the Arctic. That's going to be the equator. <laughs> That's going to look. Oh, well, there you good. go. See, prime real estate. Get up in none of it now. Yeah, you know, if you were to buy a big swath of Hudson Bay, you're going to be on like, you know, that's going to be the new Caribbean. <laughs> you know, really. Uh, I mean. I, I'm going to stay right where I am. I'm in the safest spot. I'm in the hilly country. If Anuita said, to finish off what he said on his serpent call, he said, in the hilly country, where the Ongwahoe are healing, there will come a great leader. No one knows from where he will come, but he will come from the Ganyangi Haga, from the Mohawk. And his words 
will be heard by as many as the blades of grass at the same time. And the rest of the people of the world will finally come to the Ongwahoe for the guidance at this time and for the transition into peace worldwide. That's what the Garden of Eden said is going to happen this past week. Sky World. Well, you know what is very interesting about that is uh, one of my best friends, Lisa, who's in Australia, was uh, she sent me a video. And it's an Aboriginal woman talking to some police who are trying to evict her from her home. And she says, you don't understand. Right now you think that we're a problem, but you need us. And you're going to need us very, very soon. Because if you think that you're going to be able to just survive what's coming or be able to handle what is necessary to be handled, you're going to be very, very wrong. And you are going to need us, all the Native people, all the First Peoples, you are all going to be turning to us very, very soon and looking for our... We just said, too, same thing. You know, and, uh, you know, I've been waiting for the great leader to show. I'm in the hilly country. I'm at the highest point in southern Ontario. I don't know if you're familiar with southern Ontario. Yep. Okay, so Dundalk on Highway yep. 10. Yep. 1,700 feet. That's the highest town in southern Ontario. And I'm just south of Dundalk in Shelburne. And so this is the hilly country. So when the oceans do rise 800 feet, and they will, when they rise that, it's going to come right fill up Ontario. You know, this show, you know, if you drove up Highway 10, remember that? Mm-hmm. Yep, I know Highway 10 very well. At Caledon, that'll be yep. the shoreline. That'll be the shoreline of Lake Ontario. Strangely enough, I've had many, many conversations over the last 15 years about the fact of, you know, rising water levels is I would definitely want property on on top of the escarpment, not down below. Absolutely. You know, the, the Niagara escarpment is part of this land here. The, mm -hmm. the Niagara escarpment comes right up and it reaches its highest point right here and then it goes down to Collingwood. Yeah. Like Blue Mountain goes down from here. You go down to Blue Mountain. Yeah. You could... Yep, absolutely. downhill all the way to Blue Mountain from just up here about 10 that would be That would be an awfully long toboggan ride in the winter. Yes. Give me a second. No. We, no problem, hon. We, 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 okay. We'll just take a little pause. Um, yes, we're definitely be doing a a quick show coming up very very soon on the round table to discuss all of this stuff but you know what my friend it looks like you need to run away and we have gotten through our stories that i really really wanted to tell okay um, thank you so much for joining us today yes thank you this very, has been nice. just an awesome experience and yes you and i'll sit down on the round table and we'll kick back and have a smoke and and really dig into some rabbit holes because oh i some of the conversations you and i have had we are so on the same road good, good. <laughs> all good but well, thank you so much thank you for being with us and i will make sure that all of the information about the mohawk news and your website is up so people can go look you up and see what there is to see yeah put that video link to the mohawk nation news video that's all my music and i'm proud of that video awesome like we will absolutely okay. do that thank you very much and thank we'll see you very soon okay. goodbye everyone